The link between China and this liberal government through Justin Trudeau seems to be deeper than we think. Prior, the assumption was that the relations between the two governments were of a diplomatic kind, but with the news coming in the past few days, it doesn't seem that way at all. And this would explain to an extent why Trudeau was so reluctant to actually act decisively concerning the scandal of Chinese interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections. A report came in that a CCP-linked billionaire who donated to the alma mater of former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and toward erecting a statue of him also wanted the university to put up a statue of former Chinese Communist Party Chairman Mao Zedong. Jeff Heinrich, a spokesperson for the University of Montreal, told the EdPup Times that the institution in 2016 received $550,000 from Jean Bin and another donor, Miu Jenching, which went toward establishing the Bin Zhang Miu Jenching Chinese Canadian Scholarship Fund. However, the final payment of $250,000 was never made. Meanwhile, the university declined to build the statue. Look, we know how smart the Chinese are, especially in making diabolical moves. Ask yourself this, why did the Chinese want that statue, particularly at the University of Montreal, which is Pierre Trudeau's alma mater? It's simple when you have the facts. Pierre Trudeau, the father of the current prime minister and Mao Zedong, built something of a diplomatic relationship back when the two were leaders in their respective countries. There are pictures of them smiling together and grasping hands and firm handshakes, all indicators of a healthy friendship among counterparts. Historically, Pierre Trudeau was one of the first leaders to officially recognize the People's Republic of China back in 1970. While this was a nice gesture devoid of any ulterior motive at the time, it is safe to say that the Chinese hoped to exploit that friendship by getting a statue of Mao at the University of Montreal, where Pierre Trudeau once schooled. Some might be of the opinion that the move by the Chinese in that regard is harmless and only served to remind Canadians of the friendship between two of their past and most loved leaders. Still, it is not what I think altogether because there's the possibility that the statue could be translated as a show of support and appreciation for the current CCP government. And we all know how dislike Beijing is in the eyes of the rest of the world, so making Canada look as though it aligned with China through building the iconic statue could place suspicious glances on our country from other nations. The university spokesperson also noted that the university had no knowledge of the donation allegedly coming at the behest of a Chinese official, as reported recently in a Globe and Mail report citing a national security source. In an email, he said, At the time we received this donation, and remember, it was a time when there was a greater economic and scientific openness in Canada-China relations, we had no indication of any possible link between the donation and political interference by a foreign country. This was reported in the Globe and Mail. According to The Globe, Zhang was instructed by a Chinese diplomat to donate $1 million to the Trudeau Foundation, and that Beijing would reimburse him for the amount. Now, doesn't that look fishy to you? Why would a government be bothered to donate such a large amount to an NGO? Of course, we know that there are no free things, and it's safe to say that the Chinese government did this to hold a pledge or promise from the liberal government. True, the narrative might be that the CCP did this to further strengthen relations between their countries, just like their past leaders Mao and Pierre Trudeau did, but the truth is that the CCP did this because they were looking for something in return. Looking at how Beijing has handled aid with other countries will tell you that this is not far from the truth. In recent years, China has been known to turn up at the door of countries in need and hand them an offer so generous that they cannot refuse. But what if those offers come pay back so bad that they could end up crippling the needy countries involved? While the CCP did make it seem like they wanted something in return, it won't be surprising if they did. Maybe that's why Justin Trudeau is so reluctant to properly investigate the scandal involving Beijing. The report from The Globe added that the conversation between Zhang and the Chinese diplomat was captured by the Canadian Security Intelligence Service in 2014, soon after Trudeau became liberal leader in 2013, and that the diplomat and Zhang had discussed the upcoming 2015 federal election and the possibility that the Liberals could defeat the Conservatives to form the government. Before our very eyes, we are seeing another part of the scandal unfold. Zhang and the diplomat actually talked about the 2015 elections at the time, and it all makes sense now. I mean the reason the Chinese influenced the 2019 elections. The CCP might have thought that with Justin Trudeau as Prime Minister, they would have a trusted ally in Canada because of the friendship between their past leader, Mao, and Trudeau's father, Pierre. They didn't choose to support the Liberal Party because they believe in the party's ideals. China doesn't even practice the type of government seen in the West and in Canada. Besides, it is a fact that the reason a country would step into another's political affairs is if the former has seen some potential in the latter. Chang was a guest at a Liberal Party Cash for Access fundraiser event in 2016 with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. 
Shortly after the 2016 fundraiser, Zhang and Niu donated $1 million to honor the memory and leadership of former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. Game Out was split for different initiatives, including the building of Pierre Trudeau's statue, a donation to set up a scholarship at the University of Montreal's Faculty of Law, where the former Prime Minister had attended as a student and was later an instructor and a donation to the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. Meanwhile, in a newsletter published in September 2016 by the University of Montreal's Law School, Zhang and Niu were seen in a photo posing with Guy Breton, former rector of the University of Montreal, Alexander Trudeau, then director and member of the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation, Pan Jingtao, then Consul General of China in Montreal, and John France Wa Gudralt Desbeans, who was the University of Montreal's Dean of the Faculty of Law from 2015 to 2019. The photo accompanied a French language article saying the donation aims to honor the memory and leadership of Pierre Elliott Trudeau who was one of the first leaders to recognize the People's Republic of China in 1970. You ask how Zhang is linked with the CCP. Here's how. Zhang is listed as the president of the China Cultural Industry Association, a non-profit group based in Beijing. The association's website also says he was a member of the 12th National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. This top political advisory body serves as a central part of the United Front Work Department. It would interest you to know that the United Front Works Department is the CCP's primary foreign interference tool, and this is according to a report posted by Public Safety Canada citing research from think tanks. A text titled The Black Book of Communism documents the history of political repression by communist states and the atrocities brought about by communism. This book said that Mao and the communist regime in Beijing were responsible for the deaths of tens of millions of Chinese people. The book states, there were between 6 million and 10 million deaths as a direct result of the communist actions, including hundreds of thousands of Tibetans. The book added, to that total should be added the staggering number of deaths during the ill-named Great Leap Forward. Estimates range from 20 million to 43 million dead for the years 1959 to 1961. All victims of a famine caused by the misguided projects of a single man Mao Zedong and his criminal obstinacy in refusing to admit his mistake and to allow measures to be taken to rectify the disastrous effects. The Pierre Trudeau Foundation has announced to Canadians that it would be returning a $200,000 donation it received seven years ago because of a possible link between the Chinese government and that donation. The Foundation's president, Pascal Fournier, announced in a statement on March 1st that as an independent, nonpartisan charity, ethics and integrity, were among the Foundation's core values. He said, We cannot keep any donation that may have been sponsored by a foreign government and would not knowingly do so. In light of these recent allegations, the Foundation has refunded to the donor all amounts received with respect to the donation pledge. These are interesting times and all eyes will be on Trudeau and his liberal government as more of this scandal, which potentially could be the worst in Canadian history, unfolds. What do you think of the CCP's move to erect a statue of Mao in the university that was Pierre Trudeau's alma mater, do you think the scandal will mark the end for Trudeau? Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. We have a Telegram group where important issues that concern us are discussed without fear of censorship. The link to the group is in the description. We would love to have you. Please leave us a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new or haven't yet, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you at the next one.